Okay, why are you going into business? What are your goals? Very important, you know, to understand what you're doing and why you're doing it to make sure that it relates to you into the future. So you need to think about how it affects other things. For example, your family. Family can be very important. If you have a disconnect with your business activity, with your business goals, and your family activities and your family goals, you're going to have problems. And I used to love it when my competitors went through a divorce because I knew they were going to be distracted and they weren't going to be spending time competing with this. So make sure that you're aligned with your family. If your family expects you home at 5 o'clock every night, don't open up a restaurant. That's obviously not going to work, right? Hey, Tony. Um, so make sure that it works with your family that's connected. If you're going to travel a lot, maybe that you maybe have young kids or something, that that may not work for your family. So stay in tune with that because it's important strength probably for you. Activities. Does this own in a business relate to what you like to do and what you typically do? The worst clients I work with are, what are you saying? Anybody here a surfer? <laughs> it's surfers. Whenever the waves are great, they're not available. The customers are calling them and, oh yeah, I was overdoing something. You know, but it doesn't take long for, they were overdoing whatever, for them not to want to use them anymore. So. If it's not going to relate to your activities, if you have activities where you can't be reliable, then you don't want a business where people have to rely on you. There are some businesses that you do things in the computer, and you can be off surfing, and it's working. They're getting taken care of, they're getting served, everybody's happy. So you have to make sure that they're aligned. You have to decide, is this going to be a hobby or a business? I have worked with people that in business, they lose 50000 a year. They're okay with that because they like doing it. They like having their shop. Their friends can come in. They've got their card. They can talk about their business and what they're doing and all that. And they're happy. Customers are happy. Everybody's happy. That's fine. But if you need it for rent income, if you need this business to help you pay bills, you're not independently wealthy or you don't have a revenue stream somewhere else, then you need to make sure that it meets basic business principles. You can't just do stuff and hope that it'll get better. You can't do lost leaders to get people in the door and then never change that. So you're going to have to decide that this is up to you. It's your business. You can do it however you want to. You can meet with Bill, you can meet with me, we can talk about business. Again, we just give you our opinion. It's your business. However you want to run it, fine with us because it's not our money. Income now or no later. This has been a big one to hurt a lot of businesses, especially in this last recession that we just had. You see a lot of immature people get into business and they start making money and they buy a truck and they buy a boat and they're taking these trips and their big rings and all this stuff's going on because they got money flowing in. The economy turns, well guess how much you can sell that truck for now? That boat for, those rings, not much. One business that I started, I had 70% of the market. 20 other companies shared 30% of the market. The way I got 70% of the market is every time I made money, I reinvested it in the business to make it better and more competitive. I added locations, I added product lines, I added drive through windows, I added things that were new, leading edge, that people had never seen before, but it made them hard to compete with me. You know, and I got such volume and economy of scale and now I can do stuff so much cheaper than them that it really made it very difficult for them. Think about this, build up reserves, invest in your business, and then when it's spending off so much money that you don't want more locations, you don't want more product lines, you don't want more business, you're happy with the way things are going, and you set aside a reserve, <coughs> then you can move into, let's start spending that money out, and let's start using it. Last is business concept. Is this concept, the business you're going in, right for you? Like I said, everybody has special characteristics that can make them valuable to others. But if you get into an area where you, you're, the way you are doesn't add any benefit, you've lost that value. I get people coming in every day saying, what's the best business to start? Well, you guys can Google 
10 best business starts, 20 best business starts, and you'll get a list based on demographics, trending, what the future opportunity is going to be. But if that's not you, you won't be successful. And have you been into businesses where the people are passionate and they know about it and they can explain it and they're really good, and you go into others and they go, I don't know, I really don't know how that works. But this seems like it'd be good for you. You know, because if they're in the wrong business. Small business is the pride of America. A lot of push going into small businesses now because small businesses are the ones that's hiring people. Small businesses are the ones that are spending the money in the economy. You look at small businesses, 95% of Volusia County is small businesses. You know, we have International Speedway Corporation. That's a big business. You know, we have, uh, you know, some box stores that are headquartered somewhere else. That, but we have a few big businesses. Most of them are small. And what's good is they hire the people and they give the advances and they're really, really inclusive. So they're important for the economy. Small business, being in business can be very rewarding. You can make a lot of money owning your own business. It's amazing some of the businesses that you get in their financials you've got. They make what? They have gumball machines in restaurants, and they're dropping over a million dollars a year in net profit? Who would have thought, right? You can make a lot of money in, in, in owning your own business. Long-term security. If you're good, things keep going, you, you keep a job. Market changes. Guess who's the last person I'm going to lay off at my company? <laughs> So you can have long term security because you can be involved in making that. Independence. It's great to be your own boss, to do what you want to do. But the reality is, who's really your boss? Customers. Customers is one. Who else? The employees. Really? You're only as good as the customers are coming in, you know, so you've got to do what they want. You go, oh, my son's got a soccer game at 3 o'clock. I'll catch you tomorrow. They're going, no, you're going to fix it today. Or I'm calling somebody else. Whoa. Yeah. So you're really not independent, but you do get to decide what is your vision? What is your mission? What are your core values? What's your business going to be about? You are the one that makes that decision. Recognition. People admire people that are in business. And they may, oh, I have my own company. I have this, this, this. And you see, they go, wow, that's pretty cool. They have their own company. Why? Because only 5% are in business. 95% of the people will never take the risk to be in the business. Satisfaction. Boy, does it make you feel good. The one thing about business that always drove me is the bear at the door. You know that you've got to pay bills. You know you've got to pay payroll. You know you've got all of this stuff. You better get that account. You better get that business. You better you know, do these things. You've got that pressure on you. And when it all comes together and it works, it feels good. You, 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 you were really satisfied. Imagine if you're a builder and you say, I built that house. I built that house. I built that house. SBDC Council, I worked with that company. I worked with that company. So it's very satisfying to be in business. It's a lot easier to be in business today than it used to be. And a lot of people think, because of these reasons, it's really easy to start a business. And it is easy to start a business. Keeping it going is not necessarily so easy. But it's easy because advanced technology, like I talked about, that place that was able to set up registration, payment, everything done online. That's a lot easier. You're sitting out there with a client. You can pick up orders. You can deal with people. You can set calendar. You can do all sorts of powerful things uh, right here. If the client asks about something, or you don't know how to fix a certain thing on, on a machine, you can pull up a YouTube video and see how to do it and get it done. But technology is 